Hello and welcome to another On Topic show. I'm John Testa. I'm the county legislator here in northern Westchester, serving Peekskill, Cortland, and Yorktown. We're here today with another show with a lot of information to discuss and uh, a couple guests actually to bring on, which we'll bring to you in a few minutes. But I want to get to the first uh, bit of information, the most pressing issue that's uh, kind of developed here at the end of the summer, and that is the MTA uh, payroll tax issue. Uh, many of you probably have heard or have, have seen in the news how the MTA payroll tax has become deemed and declared unconstitutional by the New York Supreme Court. And uh, to me, that's a, a vindication of where we were just two years ago. And some of you may remember when this tax came down and Nassau County, which was the first county to really challenge this tax, uh, filed the lawsuit declaring that this uh, law was unconstitutional. Uh, I was the one at the County Board of Legislators who uh, spearheaded the initiative to have our county join that suit. Um, I was joined in an in initiative back then two years ago with County Legislator Vincent Tamanya, who happens to also be the chairman of the board for the, West, for the Putnam County uh, uh, Board of Legislators. So we were together and Putnam County was joining the suit. I felt Westchester should join the suit. I brought that to my colleagues on the Board of Legislature and in, here in Westchester. They agreed. We voted to do that. The county executive and I discussed it. He agreed as well it was worth pursuing, which they did uh, in the administration. And by uh, the end of 2010, uh, the county of Westchester did join that suit. And now here we are two years later, uh, vindicated by the Supreme Court of New York. With some colleagues of mine uh, recently uh, to uh, praise this ruling, the state legislators uh, who represent this area were there. County Executive uh, Rob Astorino was there. Locals, we did it at New Yorktown. We will stick together. I'll bring you information as it unfolds. You'll see it in the news. And hopefully, uh, in a short time, we'll be uh, putting this issue completely behind us. The courts will, up, uh, will uphold the unconstitutionally rule, and uh, we'll be able to uh, move forward. I'm joined by a good friend of ours here. You recognize George Oros. He's the chief of staff for Rob Astorino. He used to be in my position here. And, and George, uh, what was your feeling about the MTA ruling? Well, I think it was, it was great. And, John, as you pointed out, you were very instrumental in this. I think that, that the, your constituents need to know that, that you were the first legislator to speak up when you heard that Nassau County was bringing this lawsuit and said, can Westchester piggyback? Can we get involved? Uh, you came to, to Rob Astorino, and Rob said, yes, let's do it. And it's a, it's a good thing we did. Uh, I see that uh, some of the other counties in the metropolitan transit area mm -hmm. that did not get in are now scrambling to try to see right. how they can get in here exactly. and, and maybe benefit from this. So uh, it was a great move, uh, and uh, Rob Astorino appreciates yeah. that you bringing it to our attention and making sure we got it done. Well, he, he did a great job of directing a county attorney to make it happen and took a little bit of work because it is a, an extensive amount of work mm -hmm. to join a lawsuit like that, and we did, and, and now we're so happy we did. Yeah. Um, I know I'm so happy you're here today, George, because there's a lot of county issues that um, we're dealing with, and probably the biggest one is the housing settlement, right. and a lot of things are always in the news about it. Mm -hmm. Why don't you bring us up to speed with the housing settlement? Well, the good news on the housing settlement is the county is well ahead of the benchmarks that were set for the 750 uh, units of fair and affordable housing that had to be built under the settlement. Uh, as of the end of this year, as at the end of 2012, uh, we have to have 150 units with building permits, and we've already exceeded that. We've also exceeded the number that need the financing in place. That's the good news. The bad news is that we have a very heavy-handed uh, government in Washington. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Department of Housing and Urban Development uh, wants to stretch the terms of this settlement, which, by the way, uh, when I was in your shoes, voted against yes. it for okay. some of these very, for some of these very, uh, very reasons that are coming up now. It was a very ambiguous, somewhat open-ended agreement, uh, and now the federal government is trying to, to use that to their advantage and really trample on home rule and local zoning, uh, as well as forcing the county to adopt what's called a source of income law, which would uh, require all. Uh, uh, landlords, be them big or small. You know, if you if you own as little as two two family homes, uh, you would be impacted by this law and have to do business with the federal government. And the irony of this is, by the way, as, as you know from being here in the city of Peekskill, uh, there are more apartments that accept Section 8 vouchers than actual vouchers that are around. So the federal government trying to do this is not going to increase the ability of one person 
to be able to use that Section 8 voucher uh, right. where they can't already. So uh, it's just an example, I think, of heavy-handedness in Washington. Rob Astorino has stood firm. Uh, we are under a, uh, the, the rattling of the sabers by the court. And so we are going to uh, comply by submitting a letter to the Board of Legislators asking them to look at the source of income law. Uh, but Rob Astorino, to his credit, said he's not going to affirm to the court at this time that he's going to sign that legislation. So. And the irony is, and I've, I've gotten plenty of calls, as you can imagine, mm -hmm. by landlords and others uh, once they've heard more about this um, push by the federal government to, for this source of income. It's actually going to have the opposite effect. Mm -hmm. It's going to take apartments off off the line and people are going to stop getting into the uh, landlord business or um, they'll go underground with uh, finding their uh, their tenants and, and take a real chance of getting a fifty thousand dollar fine if they're caught doing it so it's it's going to put a, a lot of people in a bad spot and it's going to have less housing for the people who need it right and uh, but a lot of people there are people who are landlords who prefer to go into the Section 8 mm -hmm. uh, yeah. program, and, so and there's some it. who don't. Right. Uh, they don't want to be in a contract with the federal government, which is right. basically what happens. Correct. So uh, we'll see where that goes. Well, and, and by the way, the, the, the county executive has, and the county, is appealing in the Second uh, Circuit Court of Appeals of the federal government uh, on the ruling. By the way, people have to know that the, the first ruling on this, where we interpreted the mm -hmm. agreement to say that the current county executive had the ability to veto the legislation because it dealt right. with the prior administration, right. Uh, we, the first court we went to, the magistrate there upheld the county's position. Second court overruled it, and we're in a third court. Right. And what's, what's disturbing to us is that while that appeal process is still going on in the Second Circuit and will probably be decided in two to three months down the road, uh, the federal government, for whatever reason, through the Department of Justice and HUD, has come in and said, if you don't do something right now, we're going to censure, uh, censure you for contempt of court. And so that's why we're yeah. sending the letter to the board. But we'll see what happens. No, it, it's a tough spot. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that the county executive's taken a stand he is, especially on the zoning as well, mm -hmm. because uh, as a former mayor, I know that your zoning laws are very uh, important to any municipality and for uh, the state or the county, I should say, to be forced to sue individual municipalities over their zoning so they can build uh, high rises right. anywhere they want, or if there's no mass transit, build them anyway. So uh, the planning well, there, comes the, out of it. There, there's a real key, uh, anybody that goes to the county website and looks up the housing settlement, there's a very key letter dated from May 11th of last year. Uh, maybe it's May 13th, May 13th of last year. And that letter is from HUD, and it outlines, and where in that letter they admit they want to go beyond the four corners of the settlement. Uh, and in there they spell out, and you know their interpretation of they admit it. They admit they, they're going, they admit they're going past it, right. and they also indicate that to them uh, impediments to fair and affordable housing include restrictions on the height of buildings, right. include uh, restrictions on setbacks, and include restrictions on where you can locate multifamily housing. So if HUD had their way, uh, you could be in a re what's now a one-family zone where you have quarter acre or half acres, and then come in and say, no, you should be able to build a six-unit or eight-unit or ten-unit building there. Uh, what that will do to people's property values is, is devastating. There, this county, we analyzed the zoning, all 843 zoning districts in Westchester County, and we examined all 43 municipalities. Each municipality in this county provides for multifamily housing. Right. Uh, many of them provide uh, uh, density bonuses for people to build affordable housing. And we've won numerous awards over the years, this administration and the prior ones, uh, for affordable housing. So this is just, to me, overextension by the current federal government. And just so everyone knows, uh, in my district here in northern Westchester, uh, Cortland and Yorktown are included in this settlement, but the right. city of Peekskill, where we are today, is not. But they have a, a separate problem here in Peekskill. We have the block grants uh, that have been held up by HUD, and why don't you just touch on that, because that's an important part of what Peekskill expects and plans for each year. Well, what HUD has done is unilaterally cut off the spigot, claiming that the county is not following the stipulation. This is even before a court has right. said we're not following the stipulation. Uh, yet they unilaterally, a year and a half ago, turned off uh, some $13 million, and of course, we're not getting any money this year, which is another $13 million. Right. And the irony of all of that is, you are absolutely correct, the bulk of that money, I would say about 80% of it, goes to areas and municipalities uh, that do not have to provide for the affordable housing because they've already right. met 
what the federal government sees as the, goal, as the, the guideline there. Uh, so they're hurting the very people they right, shouldn't exactly. be hurting. It, it also cuts off funding for homeless prevention programs, foreclosure prevention programs. So the very people that the federal government and the housing and urban development folks are saying they're trying to help, they're penalizing uh, by the fact that without a court ruling, without anybody other than HUD saying we're not following right. the agreement. Recently, everybody received in the mail this uh, prescription discount card. Can you explain a little bit about that? It's something I think is wonderful for the countywide residents. Well, it's a, it's a terrific thing. No cost to the county. The mailing didn't cost a dime. Uh, this doesn't cost anything. It's run through an uh, organization called the National, uh, the New York State Association of Counties. Uh, and what it does, if you have no prescription coverage with your health insurance, or if you're underinsured, uh, undercovered with your prescription plan, you can use this PROACT card going through the, uh, the pharmacies that accept it, and you will get some pretty right. decent discounts on, on medications that you may need. So uh, it was a program. It took us a while to come onto right. it. We, we, we discovered there were other plans out there as well. Uh, but out of the 57 counties in, in New York State outside of the five boroughs, out of the 57 counties, about 50 of them went with this one, and we eventually, after studying it, said this is a good deal and we're going to go do it. And again, it doesn't cost the county one dime. So the day that uh, this stadium was dedicated, uh, then County Executive Spano was here as the county executive. I was here as the legislator. You were here as the mayor. And I know that that county executive, myself as the legislature, and, and you as mayor worked very, very hard. Uh, to build this stadium yes. and get the funding in place and do all the things that had to be done. And it, it's a great partnership and cooperative effort, and, and it's a nice stadium. And you presented me with the bat. I've forgotten. We all signed a bat, right. several bats that day, all the dignitaries yes. that were there. Uh, and you presented that to the museum. It has all our yeah, names. That was, that was. I thought that was an appropriate thing to do. Yeah. You know, we worked very hard to make this happen. Uh, it's a beautiful field. It's used quite a bit. And since uh, this field is named Peekskill Stadium, and the reason I came up with that name uh, when I was uh, in the planning stages as mayor for the field is the field you mentioned that was where A&P is was called Peekskill Stadium right. for the Peekskill Highlanders so we're not we're only stones throw, throw yeah. away uh, from that field so I thought it would be appropriate to honor that team by renaming this field Peekskill Stadium so uh, actually uh, we have the, the presentation that was made there at Peekskill Stadium that I uh, when I presented the bat and we're gonna go to that now thanks George thrilled to be here today and I know how much work went into putting this together I met with Bob a couple times and he explained to me all the people he had to contact and all the work and research he's done so this is a thrill uh, I grew up with the Jets so speaking of football you know I actually got the experience the Jets but I never got to experience the Highlanders and it was always something uh, that I regretted uh, I heard, heard all the stories uh, from my father and others about the great times of the baseball team here so as I grew up and played baseball myself I thought about it quite a bit um, there was a group of us um, not too many years ago who got together who wanted to bring um, regulation size baseball back. We had plenty of Little League and other types of level of baseball, but we wanted to have uh, our own taste of uh, full size uh, regulation adult baseball here in Peekskill. So we did for a number of years, we looked for locations, we tried to convince those in office to uh, help us build it. Nobody seemed to be interested. They always went back to another Little League field, which we didn't need. We wanted something that a professional team could come and play for, and maybe even an, an entice a uh, team back to Peekskill. So it took me to become a uh, member of the local government to make it happen. And when I uh, became a city councilman in uh, the late 90s, uh, I tried for four years as a councilman. Didn't quite get there, but then I became mayor, and I was able to make it happen and I'm very proud of the Peekskill State. We call it the Peekskill Stadium in honor of you, in honor of the Peekskill Highlanders and the Peekskill Stadium that was here when you played. So please accept our honor in uh, naming the stadium the Peekskill Stadium for in honor of the Peekskill Highlanders. Now, George will remember this because he was in my position <laughs> eight years ago, actually, tomorrow. Tomorrow's the 21st, right? Wow. Eight years ago tomorrow, exactly, we uh, christened and dedicated the stadium. And everybody who came that day, I had a special bat made up at the Cooperstown Bat Company. And everyone who was here that day signed it. And also a professional baseball was signed that day when it, by everybody who was present. And I want to present these to the Peekskill Museum today to have in their collection. And hopefully they will display that forevermore. Thank you. 
George, you're on here. So again, thank you for the memories, the history that you gave us here in Peekskill, and we look forward to seeing you all week and enjoy the week. Uh, a few issues um, for our area that you may be interested in. Some of them you probably cannot miss. One of them being uh, the Main Street rehabilitation of uh, all of Main Street. Um, the rehabilitation meaning new curbs being put in, ADA compliant corners being put in, and, and other repairs before it's completely repaved. Uh, Main Street Route 6 is owned by the county from uh, the project that was completed a couple years ago at the bridges at Route 9 all the way to Conklin Avenue behind the uh, Beach Shopping Center. That whole strip is going to be done uh, and is in the process of being done as we speak. It will be done late fall uh, and that whole corridor will be repaved and rehabilitated. That was something I was able to get through with my colleagues last year, the funding to be put in place for the work to be done now. Just as I was just able to get the funding in place for the design of rehabilitating Route 202 uh, Crom Pond Road. That's going to be done as well right from uh, the center of downtown Peekskill all the way out to where you see the project being done now at the hospital. That's where the state uh, takes over. Uh, Route 202 right by the animal hospital is where the state picks up the road so the county portion will be done as well. So that'll be done probably uh, next spring. But the design uh, process is going on now. Repairs are being done here and there on Route 202. So we're proud of those two projects. Two of the things I've been trying to do since becoming the county legislator is to upgrade all the county-owned infrastructure in the northern part of the county. It's been ignored for a long time. The parks as well have uh, a lot of work that had been needed and still need, uh, needs to be done. Uh, last year we were able to uh, repave and, and fix the parking lots in Blue Mountain Park as well as George's Island, both county parks. And recently we were able to now have the planning uh, begin for the rehabilitation of some of the buildings in uh, Blue Mountain as well as uh, the Blue Mountain Sportsman Center. And it's been a real honor for me, speaking of parks, to have my colleagues at the board uh, appoint me as the county board representative on the county parks commission. So now I'm able to represent all of Westchester and, and on the parks and uh, I've been recently put in the position. It's an honor with all the work uh, they saw that I did as mayor here in Peekskill, uh, here at Peekskill Stadium being one of those uh, accomplishments we were able to do and all the other uh, parks that we were able to rehabilitate throughout the city of Peekskill and the riverfront and with the work I've been doing at the county they felt that I was the one to be uh, the representative so I appreciate that it was a real honor for my colleagues to support me so uh, actually we're now in the 50th anniversary of the county park system so you can go on the county website through my website might be the easiest way johngtesta.com there's a link to the county website or you can go directly to westchestergov.com and go into the parks and, and get this uh, brochure uh, they're around in, in different venues around the county, but you can get it online, all the activities going on in the parks as we move forward through uh, 2012. Another great project we were able to do, uh, I was so happy to be a part of, which was the rehabilitation and uh, upgrading of the senior center in Yorktown. The seniors in Yorktown for a long time have been needing a new location and a rehab of their existing location. And we did what we could from the county point of view to bring some funding in to help the town of Yorktown uh, design and, and rehabilitate the, the senior center. It's a great new place. We were there recently uh, this spring for the ribbon cutting and for the opening of the new center. And it's being well used as most senior centers are. Uh, I try to do whatever I can to help the seniors throughout the district, and this is just another example. So congratulations to the town of Yorktown and the seniors of Yorktown enjoying their new location. Another initiative, speaking of seniors and, and also veterans, as a matter of fact, I want to talk about an initiative that is uh, just about complete, and that is uh, what an organization I've been working closely with called the Legal Services of the Hudson Valley. They're a great organization that brings free legal services to seniors and others who are in need. Uh, right now, the only place that you can go to get these services if you're a senior citizen is to White Plains and Mount Vernon. And we're looking to bring a dedicated office here to Northern Westchester, the Peekskill, Cortland, Yorktown region. And uh, not only to serve 
seniors, but also to serve veterans. So we're going to be bringing that to you soon. The details are being worked out, and I'll be happy to uh, bring that news to you when it's done. And so stay tuned for seniors and, and veterans, a dedicated office here in northern Westchester to serve your needs in the legal community. Now let's go to our uh, next guest, uh, someone you probably will recognize, Rosemary Panio, who is from this area, from Yorktown, and who has been very involved with the local hospital in uh, Cortland, the Hudson Valley Hospital Center. So let's go to that interview now. Hello, everybody. We're here at the Hudson Valley Hospital Center, uh, right here on Route 202, Crown Pond Road, in, in the town of Cortland. And a special guest here today, someone you may recognize, Rosemary Panio. Rosemary uh, and her husband, uh, Rocco, had the Panio Liquors for 40 years, 40 years in, in the city of Peekskill in the Crossroads Plaza. She's a Yorktown resident, involved in many, many organizations throughout the area. We've worked together on the Lincoln Society yeah, of Peekskill on the, on the board there uh, quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And today we're here at the Hudson Valley Hospital Center because Rosemary is on the foundation board and they're having a special event. She puts a lot of time into this event, into the hospital. And we have her here on the show today to uh, talk to us about the event, and maybe you might be interested in attending. Rosemary, how are you? Thank I'm you for well. being how here. How are you? It's a beautiful it's a day. Beautiful day. It's it's a great place here. The Hudson Valley Hospital has done a lot of, yep. a lot over the last ten years or more Absolutely. expansions and Absolutely. such. But you are here, obviously, to uh, help with the foundation with a special event. Yes, yeah, so we have a wine tasting event uh, almost every year, mm -hmm. and uh, what we do is we taste wines and foods from around the world that's our our, our motto this uh, this year is wine and dine around the world right and um, we're going to have it at Trump National Golf Course in Briarcliff Manor on November 15th uh, at from 6 to 9 p.m. and it's a lovely event we get to meet a lot of people uh, who are very interested in wine and foods and the hospital because we're so happy that all the proceeds will go to the Ashikari Breast uh, Care Center Fund, and um, it's just a wonderful event, and we do it for a great reason. We can provide state-of-the-art health care to people who need it very close to home, so it's, it's a very nice thing. Um, we have wine vendors who come, and we have also invited area restaurants to come and either send us their signature dish or actually come and prepare it there so that people will see the mm -hmm. type of food that they have and if they let us know that they will are willing to participate before September 21st we will actually put their names on the invitation so they get a little bit of publicity people come and taste their food along with the wine we do the pairings and uh, we have a great time and we, we raise some money for a great cause so this is a real experience for somebody who goes. They yes. get to go there. They get to taste, obviously, wonderful wines wonderful from around the wines, world. Right. They get to taste wonderful food from yes. the area. Yes. Mixed with people at a great place in, a in great Trump, place. Trump great Cloud, place. Um, yes. a golf course yes. down there, right? It's conference center. So it's a real experience. It How really much is, is it a person to it's go? It's $100 a person, and all of that will go to the breast care fund. They this actually carry breast, and there is there are we we virtually have very little expense because of the fact that the venue is donated, the wines are donated, right. and the food is donated. Great. So, so if somebody wanted to inquire about this, they could call or they could write uh, email uh, at uh, the foundation yes. at yes. hvhc. Yes. Dot org. Yes, they, foundation at hvhc. org. And the phone number is seven three four three five two six. Seven three four three five two six. Yes, that's great. We'll Wonderful. make sure we put that on uh, the screen, okay. and we make sure that we have that at the end well, of the show. We appreciate that very well, thank much. Thank you for joining it's us so today. So nice to see you and again. Good luck with your event. Thank you. Thank you. Finally, uh, the last segment of the show before we leave you is to just discuss some of the events that took place around the district recently. One of them happens annually. Uh, it's a very important event here in the city of Peekskill. Uh, actually, we're here on uh, the area where the stadium is. This whole area was the Fleischmann plant uh, for many, many years up until the 1970s. And back in 1918, there was a horrific tragedy of fire in the Fleischmann plant of that year. And seven firefighters in the city of Peekskill were killed in that, in that blaze and fighting that fire. And uh, ever since 94 years now, the Peekskill fi Volunteer Fire Department makes sure that they recognize and honor those seven members 
and they make sure they have a memorial service on August 1st each and every year. Also, uh, there was a, uh, an event just up the road in Mohegan Lake in New Yorktown. A uh, new business opened up. I always try to be uh, there to support new businesses. A TCBY yogurt, a frozen yogurt shop opened up in Mohegan Lake, actually in the area where the old Charlie Brown uh, restaurant uh, was, for those of you who may remember, out there in Mohegan Lake. Also adjacent to the TCBY is now open a Pizza Hut. So this, this proprietor and his wife uh, run both of them together, and it's a wonderful business, so please stop out there. Soon to come next to that, and we'll bring bringing that to you in a new show, is an IHOP. Another proprietor out in Yorktown is going to be opening up that business soon, so we look forward to that. Uh, also in Yorktown was a very, very important and, and solemn event that took place recently, and I want to give uh, congratulations to Supervisor Grace and the town board for putting together a very important uh, event, uh, a dedication of a memorial, a plaque to a, a veteran from the area who gave his life in Afghanistan, David Fahey, in 2011, a youngster who grew up and was part of the Yorktown community. Uh, it was a very important event for the community. It brought the community together, and the family was there, and the father gave a very moving speech. Uh, others were there to mark that uh, memorable occasion and to have that plaque dedicated. Brought the community together, and you can go and see that plaque in the Patriot Garden that they have behind Town Hall there in Yorktown. So please stop by and, and look at that. Speaking of veterans, another event that took place recently in the town of Cortland, and the town of Cortland is very dedicated to their veterans, and the supervisor and board there have numerous uh, occasions where they do that, and this was no exception. In Verplank, uh, a new memorial uh, park was opened up at the end of Broadway in Verplank, right along the river, in a beautiful location uh, where uh, the local American Legion worked with the town board to create a, a, a plaque and an area to go visit, the beautiful little park for veterans. Please go down to uh, Verplank at the end of Broadway, right where the river is, and you'll be able to visit that park. It was a great occasion and a great cause. Another show comes to an end. I want to thank you for joining me. If you need to contact me, please don't hesitate. The best way would be through my website, johngtesta.com. At my website, you can email me. You can uh, go to my blog, which is a link to my blog, a link to uh, my Facebook page, if you want to contact me through Facebook, you can go to the YouTube channel that has all my TV shows, you'll see past on-topic shows, as well as uh, other videos. You can call me at my office, 914-995-2828. Uh, if you need to call me directly, uh, many of you run into me as I go to different events throughout the district. You just see me. Don't hesitate to say hello. If you have any concerns, don't hesitate to let me know. So until the next time, we'll see you on the next On Topic.